The slippery elm can also be used on the scalp. And to use it on the scalp, now the herb that is a specific for all scalp issues, so we might look at scalp for a moment, for all scalp issues is rosemary. And this is rosemary essential oil. The essential oils are expensive, but please remember <laughs> that it takes about a whole bucket of the herb to get almost one drop of the oil, so no wonder they're expensive. But it's important to remember that, realising that they're also very, very strong. Yeah. So your scalp herb is your rosemary. Does it have to be an essential oil? You can make a tea with that, but of course it won't be as strong. But then again, you could, you could bring it to the boil and slowly simmer a lot of rosemary in a little water and you can certainly make it a lot stronger. So anything to do with the head, you would use rosemary essential oil. So with the scalp, we've got a few issues there. And one can be um, head loss. So with head lice, you can paint the scalp with slippery elm. You put water with it to make it like a soft gel. But with head lice, so we're looking at slippery elm, we're making, these are all the things you can do with slippery elm when we're looking at the scalp. So with slippery elm, if you're going to use it for head lice, you've got to put something in there that's incredibly strong. So you can use thyme oil. So thyme essential oil is very, very strong. And the head lice hate it. So what you can do is you could make, let's say for this you would do half a cup of slippery elm. And in that half a cup you might put one and a half cups of water. So in that mix, you might put probably six drops of thyme essential oil. And that's very, very strong, but you, you've got quite, you've got about a cup and a half of, of gel. And how would you paint the scalp? What you do is you, and before I was a psychiatric nurse, I was a hairdresser. So when we used to dye hair, we'd, we'd divide the head into sections and then we'd We'd put the comb in and paint one bit, and then and then paint another bit, and then paint another bit. So you get the the gist, so that the whole head is covered with this this mixture that can uh, kill head lice. And then you would keep that all wrapped up. You could put a shower cap on or plastic bag round and tie it in a knot. You would want to keep it there for about four hours. So head lice that can be used for that. What about if someone's got a very dry scalp, um, dandruff or sometimes psoriasis in the scalp? The slippery elm can be excellent for cleaning that up and nourishing it. So what you would do then is you do a similar amount of this, but this time you'd put the rosemary essential oil in because the rosemary essential oil is very nourishing to the scalp. So let's say dry scalp, eczema. Some people do experience eczema in, in the scalp. Then you would do the, the slippery elm and the rosemary. What about hair loss? So for hair loss, an excellent mixture for hair loss would be probably a quarter of a cup of uh, coconut oil and a quarter of a cup of the castor oil. Yeah. And then rosemary. So with the rosemary essential oil, Oh, you're probably looking about six drops. 
And what the person does is they massage that into their scalp, um, tie it up in a knot, and try and leave that all day. Someone said, can I sleep with it? Well, if you want, <laughs> you can sleep with it. And then when that, when, when it's washed out, be very cautious on the shampoo you use. And I'm going to give you a name of what you never want in your shampoo. It's called sodium laurel sulfate. And sodium laurel sulfate is what they usually put into shampoo, sometimes even put it into uh, toothpaste to make it foam. And what sodium laurel sulfate, it's a chemical that kills the hair follicles. So you don't want that. <laughs> if you're not sure what the names are on your products, Google them. Which is, it's not hard to do. Yeah? Have you also a recipe when we would like to make our own shampoo? I don't have a recipe for making your own shampoo, but um, remember the guy with the big orange woolly hair and beard? He just washes everything with sodium bicarbonate. I have heard that you can wash your hair with aloe vera and apparently it'll even soap up. I live at Misty Mountain Health Retreat. We have an incredible range of <laughs> natural shampoos and conditioners. <laughs>